bad, 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 sorry. <laughs> I know better too. Anyway, good morning. Hi, I'm Kristen Omdahl and welcome back to Yarn on the Beach. Just like I promised yesterday, we went on a little adventure this morning, little field trip, and we've gone to a different beach. I had to go for, I think, a 20 minute walk to get here. Good morning, KB. We are in, we're on a different, we're on an island this morning. We're on, what's this island called? I think it's called Estero Island. Good morning, Darlene. Good morning, Anne. So we left Lover's Key, walked over a drawbridge, walked up a peninsula, and now I'm at the tip of this peninsula at this Carlos Pass, which is goes from the inlet water through to the Gulf of Mexico. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning, everyone. I see lots of good mornings. Thank you for joining me. Show you a quick preview of where we came from this morning. If you see back here, you see that drawbridge? I parked on the other side of that drawbridge and then walked, it was kind of creepy walking over the drawbridge actually. There was a pedestrian path separate from the cars, thank goodness but the grid on the drawbridge part felt a little weird on my shoes and my feet. And then walked up this peninsula, crossing my fingers the whole time that we'd have cell phone reception here, which we do, so that's awesome. And you see we've got a little bit of the sunrise coming up, very light waves, pretty strong current in the past though. Good morning, Elisa, good morning, Monica. Thank you all for joining me this Saturday morning very windy. I'm not sure if it sounds windy, but it is windy here. A little chillier than I expected, but what else is new? <laughs> Good morning, Terry. Good morning, Lucille. Good morning, Leah. And one of the... Uh... Good morning, Elizabeth. I'm working on my scarf still. Oh, and I wore a different cowl this morning uh, also. I'm wearing... This one's made in Be So Fine yarn, and it's a really long cowl. And I wanted to show it to you because it's very interesting how you can wear this as well. I'll take it off so you can see what it looks like. It's a simple tube in double crochet. This is colorways called Tropical Hot Coral. It has an edging on both sides. And because of its length, not only can you wear it as a cowl, but if you really needed to, if it was super cold outside, you could also wear it as a hood under your coat. And because of that little lace edging, I think it would look super cute. Imagine like with my big white winter parka, how cute that would look if I was out in the snow wearing a bright pop of color under my winter coat. It's not warm enough for this wind, but <laughs> oh well. I'll be back to Florida weather soon enough. Another thing I wanted to show you this morning was uh, how I like to change color. When you're changing color in crochet specifically, you want to leave the last step undone on your crochet hook before you add the new color. So what I'm gonna do, and I'm actually changing color right now, so that's even a little bit different, but I did not finish the last single crochet at the end of this row, my last step of the yarn over pull through two needs to be completed with the new yarn. So you complete the last step of the previous color's last stitch with the new color. And that's how you get an invisible join between the two colors. Now, if you choose to, you could, let's see, where's, you could work over those tails. Well, I'm sorry to hear someone's not feeling well. Other people are asking how someone's doing. Hope that uh, person is okay. If you work over those tails as you go, it will help shorten the process of weaving in ends. Good morning, Annie. Oh, which brings me to another question. Yesterday I had someone quite upset with me after the live broadcast was over because she was commenting on the recorded version. Good morning, Zara. She was recording, commenting on the recorded version and felt like I was excluding her 
and not saying hi to her. And I just want to talk about it very briefly because it's very interesting how quickly our perspective can change on, in any given moment. And I want to suggest, very gently suggest, that if you are concerned about something like that, to please pay attention to the above screen. There should probably be some sort of um, button on the screen that says whether I'm live or not. And I'm pretty sure in the recording it says was live, doesn't say. And if anybody wants to chime in with me and tell me what it looks, the differences between the two, just so that everybody knows. I don't want people to be disappointed and think that I'm saying hi to everybody but them. I, even though it's an easy mistake to make, I know how easy it is to have hurt feelings. So if I can educate anybody on what to look for between the two, um, I would be really happy to do that. So if anybody wants to chime in and tell me how it looks differently, I would love to share that. Sandy says if you tap on the screen it will tell you. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Zara. I'm glad you like my projects. That's wonderful. Oh, Darlene has medicine to help her heal and kids to help her. That's wonderful. Good morning, Fabiola. Okay, KB says during the live feed there's a bottom of the screen that says live chat. So I'm assuming when you're watching the recorded version, that goes away. So there's a really easy way to tell. Okay, Shirley's saying also it says, gives you the option to live chat when it's live, and it says was live when it's recorded. Hi. Good morning, Susie. Thanks for joining. Yes, Sandy, this is a little bit busy and it's all new people. So uh, it is uh, new people shocked by the live broadcast at the beach. <laughs> That's okay. I'll either come here regularly and they'll get used to me or they won't. So <laughs> yes, Penny, I am somewhere different today. I went on a little field trip like I promised yesterday. I juggled a few things around this morning and I've gone a little bit north to the south end of Fort Myers Beach which means I'm on Estero Island and there was no there's no parking at this edge of the beach. Whoa! <laughs> Breakfast time for the pelican and I'll just show you really quickly. I had to park on the other side of that drawbridge then walk over the drawbridge and walk down this peninsula to get to the edge of the beach here, which I thought would just be fun to see some different nature, maybe some different wildlife, and just a different view. And it was fun, except for walking over the drawbridge. I didn't care for that so much. Lee is planning to make cinnamon bread. Yes, yeah, Sandy, it's a really spectacular part of the world here. We're on the edge of the Everglades and have lots and lots of wildlife here. Mostly a tropical climate, except for uh, winter, which is a short winter, but still winter nonetheless. Oh, Darlene, I'm so glad that all the well wishes are making you feel better. That's really special. Oh, I cut the wrong yarn off. No, Anna, I just realized I made a mistake. Instead of cutting the blue and keeping the pink, I cut the blue. So now I've got to go back. Whoopsie. Oh. Yeah, we'll do that again. <laughs> oh, Monica, it happens, right? That's what happens when you try to walk and chew gum. <laughs> Good morning, Edna. Thanks for joining. Uh, Lee, it happened yesterday too, I know. That's what happens when you try to walk and chew gum. <laughs> I don't worry about stuff like that though. 
Yeah, it's the same project as yesterday, Annie. Um, I'm gonna try to work on this exclusively until I finish it because so many people are excited to have the pattern. So I'm trying to work on it. I've just got so many other things going on behind the scenes that trust me, I'm not picking up other yarn until this is done. I have other jobs to do, <clears throat> but I promise not to pick up any other yarn until this is done. But between shipping and labeling and winding yarn and working on my website and working on marketing and final edits for the book 14, there's a lot going on behind the scenes as well. So it's just, it's getting there, but it's gonna, it's going a little slower than I normally work. Honestly, I think it's something I could get done in a day if I could actually sit down and spend time on it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it will because honestly, I think it's long enough now. See, it's plenty long enough now to be a cowl. I, somebody said she appreciates how early I get up to do this and I have no idea who it was because it went away too soon. I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. I mentioned book 14 because I'm working on, uh, Gosh, such a learning curve, learning how to independently publish and be the publisher. But I'm so excited because the more I learn and the, uh, the more I learn about it, the um, easier it will be for future ones too. It's just like when you learn a new uh, crochet technique or knitting technique, right? So let's say you're working on a project and um, you're learning a new technique, whether it's cables or a Tunisian stitch, you're so much slower the first time you do it, right? Because you've got to not only understand what the pattern says, get your hand-eye coordination and your mind to get your hand to do the stitches. Do it in a relaxed way that you don't tighten your tension. There's so many components to learning something new so that that first project might have some mistakes, might have some backing out and unraveling to do, or might just take you longer because you're going slower. And then once you do that first project, your next project becomes that much easier. Well, the same is true with publishing, independently publishing a book. I'm having to learn all of the jobs, except for editing. I have amazing uh, editors working for me, so thank God for them. But most of the other jobs I'm learning as I go and working with some great people to uh, be able to, I don't know if you'd say mentor is the right word, but with some really great professionals that are answering my questions for me. Love crochet, this is one to be mine. It's six degrees in Nepal. Ooh, or, oh, Northeast Pennsylvania, I think is what that meant. Sorry. <laughs> that sounds cold. Colder than here. The wind's pretty cold here this morning, though. Oh, crochet force is guiding somebody when they're learning something new oh and I'm so glad you made hearts last night who else is making hearts for Valentine's Day that's wonderful I'm so happy that I made mine I think they're gonna make such cute additions to Valentine gifts good morning Lori thanks for joining Wow Lucille's teaching her granddaughter how to crochet today that's wonderful Ooh, Lisa Good luck to your son in his basketball game today. Lots of love in the hearts. I agree, Faye. I agree. Let's see. Should I attempt to start over on my mistake? <laughs> yes, I should. <laughs> You're welcome, Lisa. I'm good at crocheting and knitting on the sidelines when Marlon isn't playing, but I cannot work while he's playing. I feel like it's my job, and this may sound really dorky, but I feel it's my job to be his, <laughs> get choked up even, to be his number one fan. <laughs> and I sit there and I give him my undivided attention. I mean undivided attention. I try to be, I try to have stone face because he doesn't like to see me get too excited and he doesn't like to see me get upset, which I don't get upset. I feel bad for him if he gets upset with himself, but I'm not the parent that gets upset when their kid isn't play performing well. I know that it's something that he has to overcome in his mental game to become a better player. Look at me. <laughs> but when he's on court, 
I, uh, it's my job to be his number one fan and I just give him my undivided attention and I put my work away. But even at a, a tournament or even when he played basketball before, when he played any other sports before tennis, well, tennis is 100% now, I've all, there's so much downtime, right? So you have so much time to knit and crochet while they're waiting or when they're in between matches or whatever. But, um, ooh, <laughs> oh, it's time for some tea. <laughs> oh, thank you, you guys. It's really sweet. And I don't know if any of you are Eminem fans, but Marlon doesn't like it when I get super emotional, even if it's just little bits like this. So I tell him I'm his number one fan, Stan, which is a line from an Eminem song. And we're both Eminem fans. Detroit people, what are you going to do? Eminem and Kid Rock will always have special places in my heart because they're um, Detroit artists. But one of his songs talks about being a number one fan stan, and I know it's not meant in a, it's meant in a derogatory way, but it's a little inside joke between us, and uh, it's funny. Makes him roll his eyes, which is the other part of my job as the mom of a teenager. I gotta do goofy things to make him roll his eyes. I take pride in that part of my job. And I know he'll remember it one day. He enjoys rolling his eyes now, but He'll look back on it fondly one day. <laughs> oh, Lisa, I do the same thing. I cry when I'm happy more than I cry when I'm sad. <laughs> oh, I made another mistake. <laughs> you know what? I just backed up too quick. I didn't back up enough. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, now I see what I did. Oh, good morning, Jean from Hamburg. Thanks for joining us. Okay, so is this third time the charm, two times the charm? I don't even know. <laughs> Sherry says she drowns her uh, sons in tears. Thanks, Donna. This is a crochet cowl that's a free download on my website. It's super simple. It's just double crochet with a beautiful little delicate edging on the top and the bottom, which, and because it's so long, I said this earlier, but for those of you joining now, I wanted you to see it's so long that in the winter time, you could wear it as a hood also underneath your coat. Imagine wearing this over under a um, winter coat. I think this would be a really cute way to add a pop of color when you're cold outside or trying to protect your hair. Let's say you're going somewhere nice and you don't want your hair to get messed up. That would be a great way to cover your hair from wind or rain if you're trying to get in to a function. Thank you so much, Ruthie. I'm glad you like it. It could not be easier. It's double crochet in the round. Such an easy project to make. Um, and you could use, I mean, I think pops of color are such a great way to uh, accessorize. Lee doesn't have any kids. That's okay. Not everybody has to have biological kids. You have other people that you nurture in other ways. I know lots of people that don't have kids. Uh, Edna wants to know what I'm wearing today. Uh, yeah, I just explained it. It's this beautiful, simple uh, double crochet cowl. It's called Tropical Hot Coral. I don't know what the pattern is called, but I will uh, post a link to it in the video description when I do the show notes later this morning and in the meantime if you want to go find it it is on my website and it is on um, under cowl so if you go to patterns go to my home page click on patterns and search by cowls you definitely find it oh thanks Edna I appreciate it you're welcome Monica um, I think that if you wanted to find it right now you absolutely could but if you wanted to wait for my link, that's fine too. Faye has a furry grandson. Oh, a funny grandson. <laughs> I thought you meant a pet. A funny grandson. That's awesome. My son is very funny too. <laughs> yeah, nobody has perfect days as a parent. Nobody has perfect days, period, right? Oh, Leah has a 
granddaughter. I think that said granddaughter. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time. You know, this was a fun place to come for a uh, field trip today, but you know, I kind of miss our regular beach with the waves. Because we're kind of on the inlet here, um, I mean, I like the current and everything, and I have to tell you, it stinks here too. It smells like dead fish. But I do like the view. I don't know if you, you guys aren't seeing the same view I see. If you can see back over here, the sun's actually coming up. That must be straight there. We're also on a weird curve of land here where we're not, the water doesn't face straight west like it does at Bonita Beach. Leah makes, sounds like she makes things for her granddaughter. That's so cute, so fun. I, I, when my niece used to live nearby, I used to bring out jewelry making supplies and just watch her eyes light up when I'd say, I'd give her an entire tray of beads and I gave her memory wire and told her that she could make her own neck, uh, bracelets. <laughs> mm -hmm. He scared me, I didn't know how close he was gonna get. This beach is really remote for that kind of stuff. Okay, maybe we won't come back here again. <laughs> yeah. You know, I get that people think it's weird, but oh, I've got goosebumps all the way up to my face. He came too close. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's behind my head in the camera. Oh, there he is. He's way, way gone. Okay, if anybody sees him coming closer, just let me know. He's probably fine though. If he was going to do something really creepy, he would have done it by now. But fortunately, unfortunately, whatever you want to say. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> as I was saying, I miss our normal beach. <laughs> and it stinks here like dead fish. It's pretty, but uh, it was more of an adventure. And I promised yesterday that we'd go on a field trip today. And I thought it was important to keep my word. But we can go on another adventure another time. Oh, Sherry remembers when her kids, her boys were little and they wanted to marry her when they grew up. That's so sweet. So sweet. I agree, Shirley. I, uh, I think he was trying to be friendly because when he walked by the first time, he was surprised by us doing a live video here. And, um... I think he was just excited. Some people don't have the same social skills as others, right? And I think that's one of the major issues with um, social media and so much internet activity is that I think people lose, the, lose their skills. Just like we lost our handwriting skills when we started typing so much, I think that we lose our social skills by not spending face-to-face -face time with people anymore. And I think that's something that I really enjoy, even about doing Yarn on the Beach Live, is that we're con communicating with each other. And I don't think, and especially with the knitting group that I host every week, the Knitting and Crochet group, I think that it's really important to get social time with people. And I think that a lot of times we just lose our skills from not using them. And think about it in terms of handwriting. Is your handwriting as good today as it was 10 years ago? KB, we're going to miss you too, but hopefully we'll see you when you come back. You're going to California, right? I know. I mean, some days, if I try really hard, my handwriting is good for a while, but... Um, Mike, what's yarn on the beach? This is a live broadcast at Sunrise on the Beach. Uh, anybody's welcome to join me, but we usually talk about crafts. So if you're interested, you are welcome to join us. Yeah, we will definitely be thinking about you next week, KB. Yes, Mike, we talk about crochet, knitting, yarn, and all sorts of things. Good morning, Brian. Thanks for joining. Uh, 
Lori wants to know if her doily has to be made with cotton. Not at all. I have made doilies with all sorts of um, fiber. In fact, a lot of mine are made out of bamboo. You're welcome, KB. We will definitely be thinking about you next week. Oh, Anna, then your handwriting is still really good. <laughs> I find that mine's good, but my the amount of time that I can do it and be good at it has gone down. Like my skills, I think that my hands get tired. Thanks, Mike. Good luck to you too. Hi, Anna Maria. Thanks for joining. Okay. Can you believe we're back to now starting the new color? Yeah, the more you practice at anything, right? If I spent more time uh, handwriting stuff, my handwriting would come back too. Oh, good. I'm glad. Oh, Peacock, fight crochet. I didn't realize you were in Palestine. Where are you? I used to live in Israel. I used to live in um, Naharia on the north border with Lebanon. Hi, Ragna from Saudi Arabia. When I lived in Israel, I had got, when I was in a lot in the south, I do believe I saw Saudi Arabia in on the coast. I can't remember if it was close enough to see or not, but that was as close as I've been to Saudi Arabia so far. I did get a chance to go into Egypt one time, but it wasn't safe for U.S. travelers at the time, and I didn't make it all the way to um, the pyramids, unfortunately. I only got as far as Taba, which was a gambling town on the border. Uh, Tammy wants to know how to order my books. Brian wants to know if I've been to Ecuador. No, I have not been to Ecuador yet. I uh, Once I get a little bit better at my Spanish speaking, I would love to do some uh, traveling in South America. I think that would be wonderful for sourcing yarn as well as doing some adventure. <laughs> And uh, eventually, I'd really like to go on tour to promote my books. Oh, somebody was asking where to find my books. Some of my books I sell directly on my website. Some are available on Amazon. And if you go to my website, on the home page, there'll be a button called Books. And if you click there, it'll tell you where all of the ones that are available now are available. So it's a great way to see all of them at a glance. I just finished making the page for the new book. Uh, really excited to be able to launch that, but not until it's for sale. No reason to uh, tease anybody. I will be launching and talking about it le without being vague as soon as it's available. You're welcome, Tammy. If you have any other questions, by all means, let me know. Happy to help any way that I can. If I don't have the answer, I will tell you I don't and try to come up with a way to find it. One of the drawbacks to working outside. Oh, here's, let's show you. I'm going to show you how to change color again. Okay. So we're at the no we're ready to do the last step of the last single crochet of this color and so the last yarn over pull through two we're gonna do with the new color like that and then we'll start the next row and notice how really pretty those edges are you can see oh, so windy here you can see how pretty those edges are even though we've been carrying up the color between the two rows it's still a really pretty edge and that's because of the way we change colors Whew. all right so let us take another minute here to soak in these beautiful quiet serene colors today and the sounds of the waves little tiny waves really enjoy watching the current go by though. That's really pretty too.
Thank you all so much for taking time out of your precious Saturdays to spend time with me this morning. I appreciate your conversation and your questions and I've had so much fun. Hopefully you've had found some peace in the natural colors and the sounds of the waves and the birds. Uh, let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful Sunday tomorrow and I'll see you Monday. Bye!